Hello everyone and welcome to another Modeling Seb video and again a video that has been seriously delayed but here it is. And just before I start the normal voiceover as usual please check out the links in the descriptions. There is a discord link there and you can see all the other videos that I have made. So back to it now. So in the last video the model was left off with all the post shading done and in this one I'll be tackling the all paint weathering meaning both washes and filters and most importantly preparing the model. To prepare a model, I must coat the whippet with a satin varnish. The type of varnish is important because it changes the way in which the enamel and oils will stick. For the smoothest finish, you would want a completely gloss varnish. This means removing the oils is very easy, but also that means that there is very little surface tensions and thus they are unable to stick well to the model so you could accidentally very easily remove too much. Now, the complete opposite is true with matte varnishes, which creates a jagged surface for the enamels to stick to. This means that removing them can be extremely hard in some cases. With this being said, most of you have probably come to the conclusion that you want something in between. That is the satin varnish. And for most, this would be the perfect choice. I would say nine out of 10 times, that would be the truth but it does depend and if you know how to use enamels you can very easily use each of these varnishes to your advantage sadly i'm not one of those people so i'll just stick to the plain old satin varnish and keep going with that even though i post shaded this model it's still a monotone one that has very little pop to it and visual interest now this means that i would want to make it pop more for this i'll be using basic artist oils which i drain the excess oil out of on a piece of cardboard after the oils dry for about 24 hours, I begin to mix them in a random order so that they can be used as filters on the model. I did also use some pre-mixed enamel filters, but I did forget to record this part, so I'm sorry about that. If you are interested, these are the ammo filters for German vehicles. They are good, but I think the more ochre tones of the oils just fit the model a lot better and make it a lot more warmer. Now it does depend on what you want, but because the model will be very gloomy at the end from the mud and dust and everything, I want this sort of colour to pop a little bit more, so this is why the filters are very warm. You can also technically do this with an airbrush if you wanted to, and I do know some people who just do that instead because they can't be bothered with mixing enamels or varnishing the model. I personally haven't done this yet, but to my understanding what you would do is you would take a series of paints such as a Tamiya range of the clear paints. This means you can get the clear blue, clear red or clear yellow. These are the most common ones to my understanding. And you just spray them over the top. You can spray them in one area to create a more intense filter or you can spray it over the whole model. I have seen a friend of mine do this with a model where he was depicting a direct light and it does look amazing. Honestly, better than filters or at least better than anything I would ever be able to do. The most important thing about these oil filters is the randomness of them. You don't want to usually put two panels next to each other using the same mixture. And because I'm only using three colors, my range of mixtures is quite limited. If you're using, let's say five or maybe even six oil paints, you will have a blast at a time with this because the variety that you will come up with at the end will be something truly too unique just to your model. Now all this filter talk is boring me out and most likely you too, so let's go on to the pin washes. Here I'll be using the single best enamel pin wash and that is the Africa Corpse wash from Ammo. Now anyone familiar with my work will not find this surprising as this is practically the only pin wash I use unless I have to do some very specific like in the last series with the well, winter whitewash on a T30 where the brown would contrast too much and as a result you would want something more green to complement the white instead of contrast it. As the norm I clean up all the excess pin wash with some white spirit and get ready to fix any mistakes along the way. The filters and pin washes had caused for the decals to become slightly discolored. Now, this is going to be very common and most people will have to deal with this in some way, but surprisingly, a lot of people don't. Now, 
that might be because some of you like the discoloration. Personally, on this model, I don't think it looks that great. But there are some cases where it does work in your favor, especially Vietnam vehicles, from what I remember seeing. They worked very well with a sort of enamel filter over the decal showing how they had yellowed in the sun. Now, I take a very small brush to do this, and I mean, it's a 10 over 0. So the amount of paint it can hold is minimal, and the paint I'll be using is a Vallejo Off-White. Now, this isn't too hard if you have a relatively steady hand, but you just have to be careful to paint within the lines so that you don't accidentally cause some white streaks elsewhere. My nightmare, and the single thing I hate doing most on models, is the chipping, and to my understanding, 90% of modelers would agree on this because it's one of those things that you really don't want to do and most of us procrastinate to the end or use alternatives like chips and nicks from VMS or use chipping fluid. Now, it's too late for me to use chipping fluid unless I would want to paint it over the tank, but that is kind of dangerous and people who do it usually know what they're doing. I don't so I would keep to brush chipping. And I think brush chipping a model is a sort of brag in of itself because it just shows that you were willing to dedicate all these hours to actually doing your model. Of course, if you were to brush chip the whole model, you might begin to question whether you're wasting your life, but an existential crisis are not here nor there. So let's just get to the best alternative. And for this, it's a sponge, like the one that you'll find under your kitchen sink. Now, what you want to do is rip this into a very irregular and a random shape. The point of this is that the sponge can hold quite a nice bit of paint, and when it's done in this irregular manner, the chips genuinely look random, and they look a lot more natural than, let's say, if you were using a completely flat face. After you rip the sponge into a random shape, what you want to do is just take it and dip it in your paint. and. I know that's easy to say, and of course easy to do, but now what you need to be careful with is how much paint you have on that sponge. You want to get rid of as much of it as possible. You want as little paint on that little piece of sponge as you can possibly get. So you just gotta dab it on some kitchen towel or some tissue paper and just keep dabbing it until you have the smallest specks. And trust me on this, it's better to have less than more in this case because you can always add more. It is very hard to take away what you've already made. So just be careful and Seriously, use as little as possible. Later on, you'll feel a lot more comfortable with this technique, but for now, just be careful and limit yourself. The easiest way to go around sort of sponge chipping is to get a pair of reverse tweezers. They're the ones that you click to open rather than click to close. If you don't have them, just take your normal pair of tweezers and put a clove peg over the top of them. It, it does the exact same thing, trust me. Or a uh, one of those paper clips. They will literally do the same work. I hope you all enjoyed that little monologue on sponge chipping, but I'm now so far behind with the audio, I better get on. What you can see me currently doing is applying some lighter tones of white onto the exhaust pipe. Now, I mix this using some lighter skin tones to make it seem warmer and thus show the heat of the exhaust. And I do this so that the exhaust will have a lot more texture to it. Before, I had applied a slightly different tone of grey than for the chipping in a random mottled pattern on the exhaust, but now I'm adding these little chips which can actually be seen on the real exhausts. Now, to my knowledge, the colour Incinerated White from Life Colour is really good at depicting this, but I don't have that, and the only place that has it in stock sells it as a set, and I can't really be bothered to buy a whole set of paints for that singular one. Which means I get to make my own DIY alternative, and that's good because I'm on a budget. The point of this is that when you apply a rust wash over the top of the colours under it, it will come through slightly showing a change in tone and thus showing the actual heat 
that would have gone through the exhaust pipes. You can usually skip this step, but it's really not a hard one and it allows you to work on your brush chipping since here most of the work will be sort of covered up and any minor and major mistakes you make won't really be that visible. So you can actually use this as your playground for brush chipping to learn how to control the brush. And this is why I'm doing this because the exhausts on this model are actually quite big, which just allows me to have a little bit more of a little bit more wiggle room. After applying this DIY white, I can go over again with a darker rust tone. Now, I might do this for the rest of the model, but to be honest, I don't know if I want to. Because the brown of the rust will camouflage itself, let's say, into the sort of drab colour of the whip itself. And I don't want to work on the chipping, on a second layer of chipping, for it to just sort of become invisible with the model and possibly ruin the grey, so I'll have to see what I do with it. Now, the reason why I'm doing this on the model is, of course, just to add some of that texture. Now, of course, all of this texturing is done just so I can flood the surface with enamels because who doesn't love those? First, I take a light rust enamel from Ammo and I apply it in a few key areas. Most importantly, around the exhaust opening because that is where all the hot gas would be sort of expelled and that is the part that would rust the most and would have the freshest amount of rust. The next place where I apply this enamel is the very first part of the exhaust. This is because all the hot gases are there at the start and it does actually rust through very easily on real photos and I would recommend you use those for this. Real photos give you a lot of inspiration and show you how you can do this. Of course, they help you a lot more if you're going for a realistic view. A realistic approach would be a lot more toned down, which I think is a waste, especially on a model when you have these sort of big visible exhausts, since they allow you to contrast it with the rest of the model. I also apply this light enamel across the top sort of seam of the exhaust. This again just adds some texture and just makes it look more interesting. After this, it's important to give at least two hours for the enamels to set. This is because you don't want to accidentally wet mix them. The problem with not letting them dry is that when you apply your next enamel over the top of it, you might accidentally remove the enamels you just put on, and no one likes that. Now, the next enamel is a dark rust, which I just apply over the whole exhaust with random blotches here and there. This again just adds that nice bit of texture. I really hope you're not bored of me constantly going on about texture because you know what? Now we gotta texture the tracks. Now texturing the tracks is easier than what I did with the exhaust as basically what I had been doing last episode with the little experiment if you remember that considering how long ago it was. Now for this I'll be using the single best rust set and that is the Life Colors Rust and Dust. I don't want to make these tracks seem all that fresh, so I'll be using the two darkest colours for shadow and base colour. I apply the shadow as a glaze, same as I did with the various greys in the last episode, across the whole length of track. I repeat this with the lighter colour, making sure not to apply one over the other, as then the rust would be too overpowering and the underlying tones of grey and blue would not be visible. Now, this is an experiment, but it does seem to be working, and I think this is the best way to go around painting these types of tracks especially these World War One vehicles. Now, thinking about it, I might do a rhombus tank with this sort of weathering, as that would probably look wonderful. But for now, let's ignore other projects and focus on this. Now, I repeat this step using the lighter rust colour, and as mentioned before, I make sure not to mix it over the top of the previous one. Finally, I take a little bit of that light rust enamel tone, and I use it as a pin wash on a few of the tracks. I do this so some fresh rust can be seen, which allows for extra texture. I promise this is the last time I'll mention it, also, this light enamel adds some contrast and pop to the track, which just seems kind of dark and gloomy, so this is a very nice addition. But for now, I think this will be it. The end of the video. Was it worth the wait? I'm sure it wasn't, but I wouldn't want to disappoint you too much. I'm still currently working on the model and a few others at the same time, so progress is steady but slow. Anyways, if you made it this far, I'm actually surprised, but I really appreciate it and hope that you didn't just waste the past 15 minutes of your life because I can't refund that. Anyways, the next video will come out when it does. Hopefully it won't be too long away, but I might be underestimating my procrastination abilities. Now, I won't keep you any longer and I will just let you look at these photos in some piece. Again, like and subscribe if you want to see me on your feed more often, and goodbye. Take care, fellas.